two minutes, do you want any background? Yes, I can provide a minute or two of background okay. about climate change and how it's been dealt with by the state of Rhode Island. So climate change has three sides. People usually say two, right? Mitigation and adaptation, but it actually has three now, especially um, at the international levels, and it's true in the state. So emissions reductions or mitigation, adaptation or resilience, and loss and damage. That is, if we don't reduce our emissions enough, then we have to adapt. And if we cannot adapt, there are things that we cannot adapt to, and that's just in the realm of loss and damage. So on the side of emissions reductions, in 2008, Massachusetts introduced the Global Warming Solutions Act and passed it, uh, which had binding targets for emissions reductions that got all the way to 80% reductions by 2050. In Rhode Island, uh, in like fashion, Representative Art Handy introduced the Global Warming Solutions Act in 2008, and it didn't get out of committee. He introduced it again in 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012. Uh, it never reached the floor of the General Assembly. In 2009, uh, when I started working on climate change in Rhode Island, there was absolutely nothing on the side of adaptation or resilience. Uh, so in 2010, we introduced, helped introduce the Climate Risk Reduction Act of 2010, which created a standing committee, uh, a commission to study the effects of Rhode Island, on Rhode Island of climate change and what the options were for the state in adapting. Um, it met for a few years. It issued a report um, in November of 2013. And late that year, um, we started drafting a, a piece of legislation called the Resilient Rhode Island Act. It was a team out of Brown University with Ken Payne, who is um, sitting here by my left. Um, and the idea was to include both the sides of emissions reductions and adaptation in one piece of legislation. And the way I think about it was having this sort of, the, it's, it's like feeding medicine to a dog, right? You put the the, the pill inside the cream cheese and, and the dog eats it. So uh, dealing with the impacts of climate change is much more immediate and uh, easier for the state to see why they need to do it, whereas the medicine is reducing our emissions or stopping digging the hole deeper. That is not being part of the problem. So um, Governor Chafee in February 21st of 2014 issued an executive order um, which he signing ceremony for sign, signing ceremony for at the West Warwick sewage treatment plant, which memorably had flooded in uh, March of 2010, um, sending sewage into the into the river in the bay, um, and then um, this piece of legislation that that campaign led the the drafting of was called the. Uh, Resilient uh, Rhode Island Act, it was House Bill 7904 of 2014, which was introduced on March 11th of that year. Um, the governor's office and the Senate policy office worked together, however, to create a different bill entirely. They started from scratch and created Senate Bill 2952, which was introduced in May, May 1st of 2014. And what happened was, since the Senate was more likely to send a bill to the floor and have it enacted, we um, had that the House bill was then sub A or was totally replaced by the Senate bill. Um, and the campaign will explain the Senate bill and what it does. Um, both sides passed the bill. The Senate was unanimous. The House was nearly unanimous. And the Resident Rhode Island Act was in, uh, enacted on July 2nd of 2014. 